Do you like playing Spy but struggle to manage your cloak effectively? Do you like the idea of being able to hide invisible in a corner indefinitely? Do you not trust your disguise to do anything other than stop sentries from shooting at you? If you said yes to any of the following, I have the guide for you. How yin's doing? I'm an Ian, and this is my TF2 How to Kill Streak series, where we look at the best and worst TF2 has to offer, and I show you how to get a kill streak with it. Because everything is a bad idea until it works. Today, as you could tell from reading the title of this video, we'll be covering the cloak and dagger. So without further ado, let's get into it. The cloak and dagger is an unlock for the spy acquired from the spy milestone 2 achievement. As for what it does, it's an alternative to the spy's invisibility watch. The downsides attached to this item are quite simple. Your cloak meter is reduced, meaning the time you can spend running around invisible is reduced as well. You also cannot pick up ammo packs to recharge your cloak meter while fully cloaked, and even if you do decloak in order to pick up ammo packs, the amount of cloak you regain will be a reduced amount relative to stock. However, the cloak and dagger recharges its cloak meter far faster than stock. More importantly, if you stay completely still while fully cloaked with this weapon, your cloak meter will slowly recharge over time. Not nearly as much as if you were to decloak entirely, but still, being able to stay invisible indefinitely is a very powerful tool to have in your arsenal. Heck, even if you do run out of cloak meter, you won't actually be forced into visibility, similar to what would happen if you were to bump into an enemy player while fully cloaked. As many of you could already tell, this weapon cannot actually get you kills directly. So if you clicked on this video hoping to find some crazy exploit where decloaking can get you kills, I'm sorry to tell you, but that's just not gonna happen here. However, I will give you advice on how to use this watch most effectively when going for killstreaks. Speaking of which, a useful trick to remember when using the cloak and dagger is that your cloak drains based on movement. This means if you need to cover some ground but are low on cloak and don't have time to wait to recharge, the best course of action is to actually back up slowly while crouched in order to maintain your cloak as much as possible. Due to the faster drain rate of this watch, I advise against using the cloak and dagger if you're trying to play on offense or tend to be a more aggressive player in general. This is a weapon that demands that you sit and wait every now and then, and while that can be okay at times, sometimes it's just not gonna work. Sometimes you're just going to be sitting there looking at the enemy's sentry nest telling your team, hey, they got a level 3 on the point, and they'll just respond to you over voice chat, yeah, we know. Or then you will be headshot by the enemy sniper bot because they won't vote kick them from the server because of course this game can still get worse somehow. However, if you're hellbent on staying as mobile as possible with the cloak and dagger, I recommend the big earner. The speed boost this weapon grants you after every kill grants you a degree of mobility that would otherwise be out of the question for the cloak and dagger. I also recommend the Les Rangers since it bolsters your maximum cloak, allowing you to work around the Cloak and Dagger's biggest drawback. In fact, this is the only revolver I recommend equipping if you intend to be playing on the Grookeep. This is because the way that Medieval Mode works is that you are unable to pull out your non-Medieval Mode weapons. However, any passive effects they have will still be active, meaning even though you can't use a gun in Medieval Mode, you can still benefit from the enhanced maximum cloak that the Les Rangers gives. This means that the Le Changer is the only weapon that can't be used in medieval mode that still has an effect when equipped. As for the other revolvers, the Ambassador is still viable if your aim is good and you don't try to snipe people from across the map, because that won't work anymore. No one uses the Enforcer and the revolver is always a respectable option. The Diamondback, however, is OP, since it grants you guaranteed critical hits for doing stuff you are going to do anyway as spy, at the cost of a 15% damage penalty and no random crits. If there was a single weapon in TF2 that needs nerf, it's probably this one. When it comes to knives with the Spy, anything other than the Your Eternal Reward will work without issue. The Your Eternal Reward is a very anti-cloaked Spy weapon, encouraging you to disguise as other players rather than go fully cloaked in order to escape. The Spicicle works best for gun spies who are having trouble dealing with enemy pyros. So, you know, if your game plan is sit in a corner with the ambassador in order to headshot people when they're not looking and then return to a different corner to hide in with the cloak and dagger indefinitely until the heat comes off you, this is the weapon to go for. However, if your intent is to go for backstabs in order to get that kill streak, the kunai is probably the best weapon to go with. This is because the overheal it can provide means that if you can get that first backstab off consistently, you can become near unkillable, especially with the cloak and dagger's ability to allow you to stay invisible indefinitely to wait for that perfect opportunity. The only issue with the kunai is that it sets your base health to 70, 
aka so frail that other players might mistake you for using the Dead Ringer. However, if you can't decide, the stock is never a wrong answer. The Cloak and Dagger is a popular tool in competitive since it allows spies to spy on the enemy team in relative safety and relay intel. It's also a good tool for when you're trying to deal with a sentry nest that need to wait a while for the perfect opportunity to strike. And that's what this thing is for. Waiting. If you want to be that ninja spy that can jump around the entire map being impossible to predict and just able to zip across from one corner to the next, backstabbing the sniper, then the medic on the front lines, and then back to this engineer who just rebuilt his shit from the last time you were there, this isn't the watch for you. The Cloak and Dagger is the watch for those who wish to be like a spider, waiting in the corner for the perfect opportunity to strike. This makes the Cloak and Dagger a great option for newer players. However, it's ill-advised to more aggressive players like myself who know where the ammo packs are. Still, if you're on a Capture the Flag map where games are effectively a giant stalemate until something crazy happens, this can help break that siege. Because of all this, I would say the Cloak and Dagger works best for players who want to go on a kill streak but don't care how big their kill streak actually is. Because when you're using this weapon, what's realistically going to happen is you're going to carefully inch your way around while fully cloaked, waiting for the perfect opportunity to strike, getting a few cheeky kills here and there, but ultimately getting fewer kills overall than you would with the other watches. This is because when using the Cloak and Dagger, where the other spies would simply just drop dead, you will be able to hide in a corner indefinitely. And since players who know there's a spy running around won't stop checking every single square inch of the map until you're dead, this makes a Cloak and Dagger better suited to distracting the enemy team instead of going for a killstreak, since realistically, simply dropping dead and waiting to respawn will usually take less time than whatever you would have to spend waiting for enemies that give up hunting you. All in all, I give the Cloak and Dagger a learning tool out of 10. Whether you're learning how to better manage your cloak as spy, or if you're just trying to learn what the enemy team is doing, this weapon will serve you well. One last thing I feel like I must mention before closing out the video here today, for reasons retaining to real life, I will be going on hiatus with this channel for the next two weeks. So don't go expecting any new videos from me until February. I apologize if this proves to be an inconvenience to any of you, however I will prioritize my own life over your entertainment. With all the important stuff now covered, be sure to like the video if you did, subscribe if you don't want to miss the next video I upload when that finally happens, comment what weapons Ian's want to see me cover in the future. I've been an Ian, and this has been my TF2 How to Kill Street Guide to The Cloak and Dagger. And stay tuned, the Cleaner's Carbine is coming up next.